What's well, Morales from Black Feminine TV talking to the creators of Send Help, which is about to premiere on All Black. We have Mike and John. How's it going, guys? Good, good. good. How are you, man? So talk to me about who came up with the concept and who got it greenlit. <laughs> well, this is, this is Jean Ellie's uh, brainchild. It's based on him, so I'll let him start. Uh, I came up with the concept, but it wasn't it wasn't fully realized until Mike came into the picture, um, went it down the line, and we it became sent help, and then it became both of our project. Um, and it wasn't until Mike reached out to me after we did a clubhouse during the pandemic, and we did a clubhouse room during the pandemic, and with a bunch of Haitian creators, and we're talking about how do we get how do we get Haitian stories told, and in the room was Farrah Noel, which is an executive at All Black. She reached out to Mike after the the panel and was saying, "Hey, do you guys do you have anything?" Mike was like, "Sean, should we should send her this." I was like, "All right, cool. We send her. We sent her." And then weeks go by, and then we get a phone call. Mike's in LA. I'm in Boston helping my mom fix, literally fixing a pipe in the basement. And I get the Mike calls me like, "Yo, did you see this email?" And Mike could speak to that. Mike speak to that when he got the email, and I wasn't paying attention. And then um, he was like, yo, it's happening. I said, I'm, I'm, let me fix this thing in the basement first before I go upstairs. And then um, they asked us, how much do you think you need to make this project? Which we, and then we were like, uh, Prentice, Denise, how, <laughs> how do we do this situation? What do we do? <laughs> no, we reached out to um, our friends who are in the business, you know, who, who've been there before, you know, uh, Denise Davis, who's an, an incredible uh, producer who, you know, produced uh, Insecure on Insecure and Rap Shit. Uh, we reached out to her for some advice. I'm like, okay, like they're asking us how much this is new for us. How do we navigate this space? Um, and we were ultimately able to come um, and, and negotiate a number. Um, and, you know, we're grateful to have their our show on their platform, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, Send Help coming out August 11th on All Black. So yeah. how much of yourselves are in this story? So when they're watching this series, I'm sure a lot of actors can relate, you know, as I watched a few of the episodes and I'm like, okay, I know a few actors myself who are waiting to see if they're gonna get renewed, you know, and it doesn't happen. Now they're back on the grind. You know, and then even just recently, you know, every day you're you're reading some story in the news about this movie's not happening, this show got canceled, folks are getting fired. You know, job stability is is real. You know, okay. <laughs> it's, it's the wild wild west out here. And, and if you're black, it's it's really hard. So, like John, how much of yourself is in this character you're playing? Uh well. It's a little bit of me, but it's also a mixed bag of everybody that was in the writer's room. Because once it started off a little, a lot of me. And then when we started writing and the writers started pulling in their ideas and people started like jumping in and Mike and everybody just started pulling in their input in, it, it evolved. So there's a little bit of me still in there. Um, some of the core stuff is still there. But then again, it's also a version of me that was predates acting, predates all this stuff, uh, version beta Jean. So, <laughs> so this, is, this, this right here is like a, a new iteration and it's something, a person that has a lot of growth and to grow from. Yeah. What did, what did you want the series to be, Mike? Once you knew they were gonna steer away from John's background, add more to it, to flush it out. Oh, no, absolutely. But also before that, to your point, though, uh, Wilson, about like cancellations happening, having to pivot, things like that, you never know. The industry is so unpredictable, you know, and sometimes you get lost in the idea of, oh, my God, my show is successful. It's on the air. It's doing great. I'm making money. And you get lost in that thinking that it's not it's going to last forever. And then it doesn't. And then what do you do when it doesn't? So that's uh, what we, you know, are exploring with with Ascend Help, uh, along with some other things. So we're 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 glad that you kind of like um, picked up on that and touched on that. But in terms of like what I'm looking um, from the show, it's similar to what Jean said. You know, it's a Haitian American story. We're both Haitian American, you know, um, and we we haven't really seen our culture expressed this way on television before. This is the first 
Haitian American lead on a show, I believe, you know, and we're exploring our culture in a way that feels fresh and that feels layered and that feels new and that's not a stereotype or 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 um a caricature of a person or what you hear on the news about being Haitian that's that's negative you know what I mean so that was really important to us but also diving into subcultures within being Haitian American within being black all that um and other characters that we have on the show like uh the um Patrick character who's pansexual you know who's a member of the LGBTQ community what that looks like um, and how he doesn't necessarily need to wear it on his sleeve. He just is, you know, and we're dealing with a lot of people who are just existing, who just are, who just, you know, you can just be a fly on the wall to their, to their lives. So that was really important to us, just normalizing um, everyone um, and their differences on the show. Dramedy is not easy to pull off because then you have to find a balance as to like telling the story that people can relate with at the same time, amusing them, you know, so like, you know, you're working with the writer's room. Do you guys have a lot of input in terms of like, I don't think this worked. Yeah, that's funny. Let's not, like you said, we don't want to make a caricature out of this person or this stereotype or this background. You know, let's do it to a point where, you know, John, you've been obviously insecure was that way in some areas and other projects, but you, you, you know, but you're appealing to a new audience watching this series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to, it's a it's a tightrope to like balance the work of comedy and drama but the thing is though like i fashioned myself as a dramatic actor before i was a, com a comedic actor and then things just started meshing together and also i love these two worlds the way they blend together in the way we and it, being able to execute what it is to be able to be easily digest for our audience and our new viewers and the, the new community that's going to be watching the show um so, and then bring in some things, some familiarity that you we can find in shows like Insecure, Rami, things in Atlanta that, that you can feel within this new, new genre, this new, not new genre, but just new facet of storytelling, especially highlighting more specifically the, the first gen Haitian American, first gen experience in America. <laughs> with the cast of other, with the other cast members you have on the show, um, are they tailored towards anybody or is it like when people see these other actors, I mean, these other characters, is that somebody people can relate with or they're just kind of like thrown in there as part of the plot? Was it the female, the oh, romance? Nah, <laughs> nah it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mixture of several people in our lives. Yeah. Um, people in our lives that, it, which makes it relatable for us and makes it really, and hopefully makes it relatable for everybody else. It's a mixture of people like mirroring Mike and I relationship, Patrick and Patrick and um, Fritz have that similar relationship that they have that have going on in that show. Um, yeah. and Mike could probably speak to him more about on that too. No, but we really wanted to tell like specific stories and explore kind of like specific characters in a way that still felt universal, right? Like these characters are very kind of like well defined and pronounced and like doing their own thing, but they're not unfamiliar. You can see a bit of yourself or you know a Patrick or you know a Fritz or you know uh, an Erica or an Ashley, you know what I mean? But also just diving into uh, Fritz in terms of like these, these um, uh, relationship dynamics that he has going and what that looks like. And that not being so unfamiliar to how we we see our relationships. We've, you know, you may have been in a love triangle or two. I, I may have been in a love triangle or two uh, when it comes to um, Fritz and managing his uh, relationship with women. But um, there are things that are just uh, familiar and, 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 um, and relatable um, while still being uh, unique to Fritz's story. There's always that phrase, fake it till you make it. And it can apply to anybody as a writer, you know, as a journalist, you know, and when you're offered opportunities that you may not be that great and you're just like, I can do that. You know, you'll figure it out. And earlier you guys are saying that like, when you got that phone call, you start making calls like, how much will we charge? How much are we asking for? So, you know, so how daunting was it when you guys are coming on board as the creators and, you know, you're meeting with these executives and they're expecting you to know, have a blueprint already you know, did you, you know, were you learning as you went along to shoot this? And did you have a creative consultant on a side of you giving you guidance as to how to be the leaders of this project? No, absolutely. Yes. We, 
we both entered into this space as co-showrunners for the first time. So there's definitely a learning curve that exists there, you know? But of course, I've had some great mentors along the way. I've been in a, a, a few writer's rooms where I've seen how it's done. I see how to um, manage people, how to communicate with others. And um, showrunning is a, is a hugely managerial position, you know, and just managing personality. So having seen that in different writer's rooms that I've been in, I had an idea of what that looked like, but also was uh, lucky enough to have showrunners in my life to uh, show me pieces of how each thing is done, you know? So both Jean and I leaned on um, our family. We leaned on uh, Prentice and Issa to, for guidance and to like give us information on like how to do this, you know? And their dynamic is very much like, like our dynamic, you know? Jean is in front of the screen and behind the screen and wearing several hats. Whereas I'm, I'm mostly behind the screen trying to make sure things are running um, smoothly as possible and um, that we're on track, you know what I mean? And so it's a similar dynamic that they have that we uh, uh, pretty much adopted. Like, okay, we see how they did it. They were pretty successful, you know. Insecure is a pretty successful show. <laughs> and then we're yeah. gonna go ahead. You froze, you froze a little bit. Ah, you froze. <laughs> so but, before we- but, but, but even even to add on to that, um, I when it comes to like production side, I have worked literally every position on the production side as from PA to second AD to second second to uh, to what's it called art department and things of that nature and camera op and DP and director. So it was, I had also had mentors in those space that would be able to help us through that avenue and through to navigate and find the right people to actually join our team in the creation of Send Help. But yes, like to add what Mike is saying, um, if it wasn't for like people like Prentice and Issa, who we can call on and ask for advice on certain situations or questions that we found ourselves into, in to help us navigate our way out or navigate our way into a better understanding or better way to solve a problem that comes about. For you as an actor, and this is obviously a big leap for you, you know, we've seen you in other projects, but now, you know, you're number one on the call sheet, you're number one as part of the creative. Uh, how daunting was it for you and you're reading these pages and you have to carry most of it and you know still learn as an actor and behind the scenes you know like carrying a lot of big stick here yeah yeah uh, it was very daunting it was it was very overwhelming at times but i was fortunate enough to have someone like mike on my side who kind of like picked up the slack wherever i was not able to take it on he was able to handle situations when i was in front of the camera while wow. while wow. he's behind behind the scenes handling all putting out fires in helping us. Yeah, get my, my Wi-Fi went out, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, I was like, I was like, where'd he go? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like things would happen, and we would be able to just piggyback and support one another. Um, it very challenging when it came to like, like on episode four, I co-directed that episode, so like being in front of the camera, being behind. Now the thing that helped us in some in some of these situations was the fact that we block shot a lot of the show, which is also difficult in itself because your emotions are all over the place in those scenes. Because one minute you're happy, the next minute you're sad, and then one minute you're in a fight, one next minute you're doing all right. So it's it's having that support system like Mike and my line producer and the my director and the other nature to assist me and being able to do the job in the best possible way without me having to think about all the other things that I don't necessarily need to think about when I'm in the scene or when I'm when I'm when I'm in front of the camera when I'm not in front of the camera I could then take on that take on a responsibility along with Mike. Yeah. <laughs> what's the what's the last thing y'all heard me say before I cut out? Uh Prentice Prentice and um Isa and how our our relationship mirror theirs. Uh, okay, gotcha. I hope like it's internet. But I'm, I'm gonna to end off. Here's the thing: there's a lot of black shows nowadays on TV, which is great. We got a lot of talent, you know, more so than we've ever seen. Uh, the pandemic has opened the ways for more programs because of the streaming services. Uh, the, so it's not a question of whether the product's good or bad. It's more about how well you can market to so people know about the show. What's the sell to this show? Like if I say, oh, there's a show called Send Help about an actor trying to reinvent himself after his show gets canceled. Is there more to that, you know, that's going to engage an audience? Mike? 
is there more to that's going to engage an audience? Absolutely, you know, it's, it's, it's about more than that. We, we tackle certain themes that we feel like are taboo that aren't often talked about, especially when it comes to men, uh, and then more so as it comes to Black men, you know what I mean? We tackle uh, a mental health and trauma and how trauma exists in the body and how it affects your different relationships. Um, you know, and also just wanting to express more about our culture and being Haitian American and what that looks like. And um, I think uh, people will come away with a lot from the show, but most of all, I hope they, they come away entertained and having some insight in, uh, more and learning more about themselves and other, the people around them. Gentlemen, let's hope we get a season two, no pun intended, <laughs> with regards yeah, to the show. Let's make it happen. It's, it's been a pleasure. Um, we are good to go.